In this next part of our Chemistry of Life series, we're going to look at the properties of water. Water is what makes life possible. Now, picking up where we left off last time, water is a polar molecule, meaning you have partial charges, and of course with partial attractions you have these hydrogen bonds. That moves the molecules closer together and allows for water to be the way that it is. Here is sort of an overview of the properties of water. Well, water can exist as a solid, a liquid, and gas on planet Earth. Uh, if it wasn't for hydrogen bonding, none of the water would be anything other than a gas because it's a small molecule that behaves like a big one. Water also has surface tension. It has uh, the tendency to climb up small uh, spaces and tubes such as soaking up a paper towel. Water is also very good at moderating temperature. Uh, water has what's called a high specific heat, which basically means it takes a lot of heat energy to raise the temperature of water because to raise the temperature means to make the molecules move more and that is fighting against the forces that would cause them to move less. So not only does it take a lot of heat to raise the temperature of water, but water also retains heat well, which makes it good for uh, organisms and good for the environment. Now, the heat of vaporization is how much heat it takes to boil water or how much it takes to take liquid water and turn it into water vapor. Uh, it takes a whole lot of heat to do that. And because water evaporates anyway, it removes heat and we call this evaporative cooling, which is why we sweat. Another property of water due to hydrogen bonding is the fact that ice floats. Ice is less dense than liquid water. This is very unusual because the solids are usually more dense than the water, I mean, than the liquid and would sink in the liquid. But the reason why ice is less dense is because it expands when it freezes. As you cool water down just a few degrees above freezing point, the molecules get, their ma or get, or get closer together and the water reaches its maximum density. But when you get colder than that, they start to form more of these hydrogen bonds at once. And each molecule can form as many as four hydrogen bonds with its surrounding molecules. And in order to do that, they have to spread apart just because of the geometry of the bond angles. That forces the water to expand when it freezes and ice floats. Now water is also good at dissolving things. It's a versatile solvent. Water can dissolve such things as sugars and other polar molecules and it's good at dissolving salts. So we refer to these things as hydrophilic or water loving. Oil and water don't mix and we tend to call those things hydrophobic. And um, that's an important thing because that allows for cell membranes to exist. Another thing about water is the discussion of acids, bases, and pH. Now, pure water is considered neutral because in small amounts, a water molecule will break into these things, hydrogen and hydroxide, and form back again. So for every one of these that breaks, you've got one of these and one of these. So the concentrations of these two will be equal at any given time. That is, by definition, a neutral solution. Now, the pH scale ranges from 1 to 14. Uh, acidic numbers are numbers below 7 on the pH scale. Basic is numbers above 7 on the pH scale. Now, what makes an acid an acid is that you've got more of these and less of these. What makes a base is the other way around. You have less of these and more of these. Now, acids and bases being opposite have the ability to neutralize each other. And that also allows for the balancing of pH through what is called buffers. A buffer is a mixture of a type of acid and a type of base put together to balance pH against other changes in pH. So we have a buffer system in our blood, we have buffer systems in our cells to keep pH balanced in us. And that concludes this video.